Hello everyone, I am Shreya Pandey and I am here to present a topic McNaughton's Rules of Insanity. Let's start with the insanity. Insanity means craziness or madness. It is a behavior which is characterized by certain abnormal mental or behavioral patterns. Insanity is a behavior against social norms or it is violated social norms including a person becoming a danger to himself or others but still not all such acts are considered as insanity portrait of daniel macnaughton's macnaughton rule was given in 1843 according to the macnaughton rule the jurors ought to be told in all cases that every man is to be presumed to be sane and to possess a sufficient degree of reason to be responsible for his crimes until the contrary be proved to their satisfaction. The central issue of this definition may be started as did the defendant know what they were doing or if so that it was wrong. For example, Abner Rogers stabbed and murdered a prison warden in the prison where he was being held. Criminality is not responsible for the act. It depends on the mental state of the person, whether the impulse was strong over the offender. Durham rule was given in 1954. It is also called as a product test. According to the Durham rule, a principle of criminal law used to determine the validity of the insanity defense asserted by an accused that he or she was insane at the time of committing crime and therefore should not be should not be held guilty should not be held legally responsible for his actions currents rule was given in 1971 according to the currents rule uh, offender will not be criminally responsible if at the time of committing the act he was not in his senses and his conduct to the requirement of law. As a result of mental defect, he committed the act. American Law Institute gave its test in 1970, and 1970. According to the American Law Institute, a person is not responsible of the offenses if at the time of such criminal conduct as a result of mental defect. Thus, theory is about both McNaughton and irresistible test. They try to prove that the criminality was the product of disease and results in loss of substantial capacity to obey law. Now, we come to the Indian perspective of the McNaughton rule. A crime is a voluntary act which is an outcome of an intent to cause an evil consequence. Mens rea is an essential element in every crime. There may be no crime of any nature without an evil mind. The concurrence of act and guilty mind constitutes a crime. But in the case of insane person, he may not understand the nature of the act. He does not have the sufficient mens rea to commit a crime. Such a criminal intent is an indispensable element in every crime. A person incapable of entertaining such intent may not be a guilty. An insane person is not punished because he does not have any guilty mind to commit the crime. The English is based on the McNaughton rule and the Indian Penal Code uh, 18, uh, and the Indian Penal Code Takes the, uh, takes the rule of section 84 IPC. Let's come to the other conditions and criminal responsibility. First is a delusion. A delusion is a mistaken belief that is held with strong con uh, conviction even when presented with superior evidence to the contrary that is something that is falsely or del uh, delusively believed or propagated. Second is the 
second is the irresistible impulse it's a not sufficient ground for exception from criminal liability third is somnambulism which is also called as sleepwalking a person committing a crime under sleepwalking is not held guilty for the crime fourth is our somnolentia somnolentia is a semi somnolence it's a midway between sleep and a wakefulness a person under the somnolentia is also not responsible for his crime fifth is a hypnotism it's also called a mesmerism Hypnotism means it is a sleep-like trance state is induced by process of suggestion. They held guilty of offenses means if any person commits any crime under a hypnotism, he will be held guilty for his crime. Sixth is a drunken state. Under Section IPC eighty six section, a uh, a drunk person is held responsible for committing any tough a type of crime, if. any type of intoxicant was administered without his knowledge or against his will then the person will not be responsible for his act under section 85 ipc now let's see the role of medical officer in criminal cases medical officers keep the accused under observation to certify whether he is mentally ill or not because in some cases people make such types of uh, acts that they are under any type of mental conditions they consider some following points at they search for any type of genetic illness whether he have or his father or grandfather have any type of mental illness second they search for any premedication that whether he was taking any type of medicine drugs or any type of intoxication whether accused attempt to destroy evidence or to flee from the scene of the crime now come to the conclusion a person can make a fake insanity to avoid the life imprisonment or death sentence because to live in mental hospital is not sorry pull it because to live in mental hospital uh, of not guilty of offenses by reason of insanity is far more comfortable than the life sentence or the life imprisonment people make so many conspiracy to release the guilty offender into a community for a uh, different motives doctors have a lot of responsibility so they have to examine every cases with lot of care and open mind so that no any type of conspiracy can let a offender live in the community because it can be very very um uh, it can be so it can be so dangerous this is a quote given by robert m pers uh, persic philosopher and a writer he said when you live in the shadow of insanity the appearance of another mind that thinks and talks as yours does is something close to a blessed event thank you